RPG Geeks, episode 67, April 8th, 2016. Isn't this our second episode this week? Hello and welcome to another webcast from TGGeeks.com, where Ben and Keith, the two gay geeks, talk about all aspects of geekdom and nerdery. Sci-fi, comics, film, horror, genre, you name it, we talk about it. I am Keith Lane and we are coming to you from TG Squared Studios in lovely Phoenix, Arizona. And I'm Ben Raginton, also coming to you from There Has To Be A Morning After Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, sorry. What was that? <laughs> I'm not even going to dignify that. <laughs> yeah, we're just having a little fun. And and yes, this is our second episode this week. We have a very good reason for having a second episode. Today, April 8th, 2016, is the launch of the Indiegogo campaign for Morning After, a new film by Patricia Chica and Christian Hodko, who we are going to interview here momentarily anything you want to say about that no not a thing uh i just want to get to the interview yeah and i i forgot to change my opening sound so we'll just do this Uh huh. we're gonna stop now we're gonna go do the interview here it is And this week, we have a really special treat for you. We're going to interview two people that are in two different places, Ms. Patricia Chica and Mr. Christian Hodko. They are both involved in the new independent film that is in pre-production right now called Morning After. So welcome, Patricia and Christian. Hi, the two gay geeks, my favorite podcasters. How are you guys doing? Oh, I'm I'm doing great after hearing you say that. And Christian, how are you doing? (laughs) It's so nice to be here, guys. Thank you so much. Sure. It's a pleasure talking to you. Absolutely. So, Patricia, as as you said and we've said, we, you are one of our favorite people, favorite directors, and favorite PR persons. So tell us a little bit about you, and then we'll get to Christian, and then we'll talk about Morning After. Absolutely. Well, uh, I'm an independent filmmaker. I have been directing films since I was 16 years old. This is... Uh, what I do, how I identify as an art, as an artist. However, I am a storyteller and I would use any outlet, any format, any medium to tell great stories and empower the audiences. And I also can do that through uh, my PR company, helping other filmmakers reach out to the media and giving them that voice, that space and allowing them to tell their stories also through uh, social media, web presence, and media presence. So that's what I do. And um, we're now preparing morning after this new film that we will talk about with my dear friend, actor, and collaborator, Christian Hutko. Wonderful. Christian, and tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, Well, uh, thank you. I am, uh, I would say, an actor first and foremost. That's uh, what I've been doing. It's my first love. Uh, And I decided that I'd give uh writing a try a few years ago and it's become a really amazing creative outlet um to explore a lot of different facets of uh humanity and the cool part is i get to really create the world myself from all the characters and everything around it as an actor you kind of have to you're stuck with whatever another writer gives you so it's been a really amazing journey yeah that's interesting we we've talked to a number of writers and and people uh, just Last week, we talked to Sean Malia that Patricia has been working with, and he was, you know, involved in all kinds of things, and he was a director, and then he began to write, and he said that writing helped him to be a better at everything. So it's, it's, it's interesting. If you know how to write, it just really helps in everything. So it helps you as an actor, as a director, as a everything, I would think. So that's definitely, that's definitely been the case for me. Absolutely. Ever since I started writing, I started to appreciate scripts on a whole new level and i've been able to as an actor look for 
all this extra information that I would overlook sometimes. It really gives you like a universal insight onto the craft of filmmaking. It's pretty awesome. Absolutely. What was your, so, so this is for Christian. What was it about acting that made you kind of sit up and say, ooh, you know, this is something that I think I could really get myself, you know, sink my teeth into? <laughs> well, it's not a traditional story, actually. I was, uh, I think, about 13 years old, and I think it felt like I was having some kind of identity crisis or some kind of a crisis at the age of 13 where I, like, for the first time in my life, realized that I'd never thought about my future. You know, oh, it was dear. all about, like, video games. And, <laughs> oh, dear. And, you know, You're only 13, please. Yeah. Thir 13, 13 is a crisis yeah, time so anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Kid, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so this one day, I'm just, like, pacing around the house by myself being like, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? What am I going to do the rest of my life? Oh, good and, Lord. You're too young. Yeah, I was too young. Yeah, I was too young. But I was, like, I, I don't know, probably just, like, an old soul or something. I don't know. Um and yeah, and it just uh, happened. There was like a documentary on TV playing in the background. Uh, one of those, I think, E! True Hollywood stories of it was featured featuring Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> oh, my and gosh. He was talking. He was like an immigrant just like me. And he was like, you know, you can do anything you want as long as you work hard and you stay focused. And I don't know if like it was a combination of factors that came together, but I just had this like vision of, of myself becoming an actor so as an just... adult. and. From that moment on, it just became like a an everyday obsession. Wow. So it was just like, I'm going to be an actor. Literally, <laughs> <laughs> it was like I saw a vision of myself at around this age. Wow. Acting. That is yeah. amazing. You know, it, it's interesting how some people come on to, you know, they discover it or they discover it late in life or early in life. It's great that you could do that uh, at such an early age and that you were having a, such a identity crisis at 13 well but i guess we have a crisis about everything at 13 i don't know i'm still kind of hung up at the idea that that at you know 13 you know there's a very old soul there because it forces me to look at myself and think well geez at 54 i'm childish <laughs> it's the best way to be when you are in this business you have to stay a child yeah and be uh mesmerized by what you see and absorb every aspect of your passion well yeah. mesmerize i would agree with but unfortunately than, i have tantrums as well so better, better than being <laughs> cynical and that, i think that that happens to a lot of people in the businesses they become cynical and then you know it's all over at that point so tell us about uh both of you tell us about this film morning after i know we've watched the the promo that you did for it and it looks really fascinating so, yeah, well, uh, you know, this script came to me through Christian. We were drinking wine on a beautiful uh, place in Toronto last summer during the Female Eye Film Festival. And yeah. he just told me casually about, oh, I just wrote this 10-page script about a group of five best friends doing this chocolate game, and it becomes a sensual exploration for sexual diversity and identity. And then I was hooked. I said, let me direct this film. I hadn't even read the script, but just by the way he pitched it and I, knowing Christian's creative side and his vision of life, I was compelled immediately to work on it. And the next day, he gave me the script. I read it, and I, I just turned the last page, and I knew that's for me. I want to do it. This is this could be my story as well. Wow. So and that that was last June. So we since then we've been uh, developing the script further through discussions, a lot of workshopping uh, the story, flipping it around, and Christian came up with different drafts. They evolve every time, and uh, we gathered this beautiful group of five of the top talent in Canada. Uh, and I will name them because they are really fantastic actors. We have uh, Christina Rosado, who is now uh, playing opposite Dennis Quaid in The Art of More. No wow. kidding. Wow. Well, that's yeah, big. She, she loved the script. She's on board. We have uh, Zoe de Grand Maison, who is a regular in the... Um, what's the name, Christian, of that uh, series? Sorry. Orphan, Orphan Black. Ah. Orphan, Orphan Black. She's a regular in that series. And we have Thomas Vallière, a very top young actor from Quebec, from Montreal, and also Luca Asselin. And of course, Christian plays in the film. So we have a very powerful cast, and 
uh, together we decided to shoot the promo for the Indiegogo campaign. And we had a, such a great time working for one long night, shooting a few moments in the script, exploring the characters. It was more a way for us to also collaborate because I, it, it happened that Christina, who is now more in LA, and myself as well, more in LA, we all were in Montreal that weekend. Oh, wow. And we just said, okay, let's get a camera, get a team together. Very quickly, everything came together like in two or three days. And we started shooting. Wow. And it, uh, and that promo is available on my website, patriciachica.com and on YouTube. You're going to see it when the campaign comes out. Right. So from there, uh, things started uh, evolving and we're, we're getting tremendous interest from uh, people who want to invest in the film. We also have uh, other collaborators who want to come on board. Uh, the team is all ready to go. And the Indiegogo campaign will allow us to just have the, the funding to make it happen properly because we only shot a few scenes and those scenes are not even going to make it in the final cut mm. because they were just like exploration of the characters. They were more like screen tests. Right. And we shot it with a, a DSLR, so it's not even uh, broadcast quality. So it looks good. but It, it looks it, great on the website. Looks, yeah, it looks great on the web, but it, it, we wouldn't... I wouldn't put a movie out there with that camera, personally. Mm. So, yeah, uh, we're aiming to shoot in Montreal in June when I go back for the summer. Uh, the cast is ready to go. Everybody's ready to go. So um, this Indiegogo campaign will just be the right outlet for us to complete our financing. Wow, that's great. So, Christian, tell us about how how this script kind of came about and what what, what was it that inspired but, you? Yeah, that was that was actually going to be my question because if, if you look at cinema history, especially anything that involves the GLBT community, there's been a fair amount of movies that deal with the sexual awakening slash coming out kind of theme, and albeit a lot of them are of what I would consider to be subpar quality, but. Right. For anybody who has not seen the the little trailer or the promo mm -hmm. that is on Patricia's website, I mean, we've seen. I've watched it, you know, a half dozen times, and, and I'm I'm completely mesmerized by it. Yeah. But for anybody who has not seen it, I'm sure you know. For our, for our audience, they're probably wondering, well, why make another film of this type? What is it about your movie? Mm -hmm that sets it apart from the others. I think I know the answer, but I, I'm going to let Christian yeah, say I it. Christian and then I want to ask it. him a question maybe, about maybe it. Maybe your answer's going to be better than mine. I want to hear it. <laughs> um, you know, I, that's a great question, and there's no way that I can possibly, you know, put this film in competition with, with I mean, so many of the films that have come out, and some have been beautiful films and great stories. Uh, for me, I'll just answer the first part of your question, what inspired this at the time was, you know, um, I was just, I was in Toronto. I was living in Toronto at the time. And it was uh, just one of the first hot days we've had that year. And I was nostalgic of Montreal where I grew up. And, uh, and I don't, it just, with, for me, for writing, it just comes in a sort of, you know, moment of inspiration. Something is going to kind of happen inside of me. And then I'll just write obsessively for hours until it's all on paper. And Morning After happened that way. Um, you know, it reflects so many different nuances of, of youth. And it's and it's uh, one important thing that I like to say is that we absolutely do deal with, you know, LGBTQ themes. Um, but it's a film that I hope will, will kind of bridge the gap between the LGBT community and the rest of the community. Um, for me, it's a, it's a story that's universal. I mean, you know, we talk, this is about a group of people um, you know, that are exploring their sexuality with each other. And uh, if there's anything that ties us all together as people is, is that we're sexual beings, right? Right. And um, this story is one that explores sexual identity in a way uh, where we try to get away from labels, not because labels are bad, um, but because, you know, I feel that there's, you know, Sexuality is such a complex thing that we sometimes try to oversimplify it in, in a limited amount of categories. And I feel that, uh, you know, I was just telling Patricia earlier on, I'm like, I think, you know, I really feel that every person's sexuality is just as unique an individual as their fingerprint. 
you mm. know there there can be so many variations in there so morning after kind of explores that notion of can you you know be okay with you know if you don't feel that you fit into one of you know the lgbt or q letters do you know if you don't fit into that can you just be okay with having no labels right you so know it really kind of transcends the labels i suppose and that that's kind of what i i got out of uh, what you the answers that you sent back to us on our questionnaire as well as looking at the script and seeing that promo that it it kind of transcends any labels i mean it, let's let's just add lgbtq d d is just different <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, that's interesting. Yeah. You know, or just yeah. unique. How about add, add a you and what, I'm unique. Yeah. Because everybody, yeah. as you said, sexuality is, it's, it's, it's their own. And however you mm. want to explore that, and I, I've seen a couple of articles recently that your generation, the generation that, you know, in the last 20 or 25 years has really become uh, has become to embrace all sexuality and there really are no labels anymore. And, and the one I saw recently, it says most of the millennials identify as bi, if you will, you know, so mm -hmm. it's really kind of interesting, I, you know, and that, that's a label yeah. in itself, but mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, a singular experience or an ongoing experience. I, I guess that's kind of how they label bi. So. Well, one of, the things Whatever. That, one of the things that I really like about this, and I, I remember years ago uh, when you and I were on vacation with, uh, with our, our good friends, Brendan and Gordon, and you had this little conversation about sexuality, and uh, our friend Brendan, who is terribly intelligent, uh, really nailed it. And I think that's one of the things I really like about your film because that you also, uh, I think you'll be covering that, is sexuality is not rational. It's a very uh -huh. irrational thing. And you know, we're, you know, Keith and I, we're at the end of the baby boomer age, you know, that era where uh, we try to not just rationalize, but we try to put it in a box yeah. mm -hmm. so that we can label it and have it all nice and organized like the more rational parts of our brain, you know. And sexuality, that, that's the lizard brain that's speaking. <laughs> so uh, it's kind of nice to see a movie that's actually going to be approaching it maybe from that particular standpoint. Now, the other thing that I think is really intriguing, and uh, this is, again, in the promo, is how you call this a love affair or, or more like a love letter to Montreal. Now, a lot mm -hmm. of our listeners mm -hmm. have not been to Montreal. And uh, so what can you tell us about Montreal itself and how are you going about trying to capture that uh, Montreal magic into the spirit of the film? Uh, is this for me? Either, either, okay. either. I'll, I'll just, yeah, I'll, I'll just jump. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, anyone who who watches the the completed film will be booking their next summer vacation in Montreal. Oh, cool. Sure. Well, we're uh, we're we're. I'm checking the website. Right checking? Yeah. No, you're not. <laughs> I'm watching you right now. No, you're not. You're looking at the meter. <laughs> in Montreal, there's a there's something for everybody, every sexual preference. Every subculture of sexuality, we have an amazing gay village on St. Catherine Street that's renowned worldwide. Oh, cool. That's one. But we also have subcultures for people who are into BDSM, uh, bisexual people, lesbian, gay, open people, open-minded people who don't want to have sex but just explore sensuality. There's clubs and venues and events for every taste and every flavor. And if I want to answer your question about why is this a homage, a tribute to Montreal, because people who have come to Montreal in the summer would know exactly what we're talking about. There's a sensuality, there's a beautifulness about people, the way they dress, the way they smell, the, the way they move, the interactions among each other in cafes and terraces or in the street. You have to think about this this is what happens in the winter is really harsh we hibernate in montreal we don't go out as much because it's cold it's gray uh gray skies all the time but as soon as the spring arrives and there's this first uh day of sunshine and warm it people go insane the mm. girls bring their short skirts the boys they're hunting 
uh, everybody falls in love, everybody uh, wants to be out, uh, being physical, being sensual. And that is something I have never felt anywhere else in the world, except maybe in Barcelona. Wow. Interesting. I found that vibe. But there's a very particular vibe, and people don't feel like working. They just feel like partying, being happy. There's this joie de vivre that we are so renowned for. That is cool. So this aspect of Montreal will really, really transcend on screen because uh, Christian really captured it so well. A night like that happens every weekend in Montreal. Oh, every weekend? Okay. Wow. <laughs> well, and <laughs> maybe, one, of, maybe. one of the things that, that you guys will notice when you watch the film is that, I mean, the, the, the way that it's written just in the script, it's, it's very, I remember getting um, a really great piece of feedback for uh, when we were workshopping the, the script uh, with a, an experienced director and screenwriter. And he said, you know, when I'm reading this script, it's like I could taste it. Oh, wow. I can, there's like texture to it. I could, I could. I, it's like it's in my mouth it's in my nose i could and you know there's there's different elements in the script that are are meant to arouse your senses uh you know as an example one of the the girls one of the uh, characters dana she's a professional perfumer so she experiences that entire night through her sense of smell and scent and as we go through her perspective we 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 really focus on that the sensual scent exploration part of it. And then you have uh, another example is, is just the heat. You know, it's specifically chosen. I chose to wrote, write the script on a hot Montreal uh, summer night where it's humid. There's no wind, you know, windows are open and it's sweaty. And there's this, you know, they're drinking wine. And so there's um, the environment is, is very sensual. And uh, so in essence, it's a, uh, it's. I, I hope it to be, you know, when, uh, uh, when, when people watch it, that you're like, wow, I really want to be there, or wow, I can really feel it, you know, in an almost four-dimensional way. That's interesting. Maybe we'll have to come up uh, to Montreal. Maybe we'll be the reverse snowbirds. We'll escape the heat. Of yeah, Phoenix. because it sounds like we live in Phoenix. You yeah, know? <laughs> our 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 weather cycle is completely opposite from you guys. I mean, you talk about the harsh winters. It's like we can't wait for winter time around here. Exactly, because we hibernate during the summertime. So tell me what a hot Montreal night. What's, yeah, what's the temperature? Uh, Fahrenheit. Yeah, what's Sometimes that? Sometimes it doesn't go below thirty. It'll be like 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, Celsius. Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. I can figure that out in just a heartbeat. Yeah. That's um. Let's see. In Fahrenheit, that would be 86. Oh wow! See that it's, it's been wet. it's already it's been really 90 cute. here. Yeah, we're getting 90 degree <laughs> weather here. Uh, so, <laughs> so yeah, the summers in Montreal would be fabulous. <laughs> yes, no, it's great. It, we have a 60 degree Celsius difference between winter and summer. Oh my lord! And four distinct seasons. So. People, they, they, their moods are affected by the weather. Right. When we, when we start the conversation with somebody from Montreal or Canada, we always talk about the weather for some strange reason. Well, <laughs> of course. Well, we, we do it here in Phoenix. Everybody asks, you know, when we say we're from Phoenix, they say, oh, my gosh, how do you stand those hot summers? Well, oh, come on, yeah. honey. The very first time you and, I ever I talk, you and I talked, we talked about the <laughs> weather. About, that's true. true. That was 20 years it's ago. True. And that conversation went nowhere. <laughs> it was a, it, it fell flat. But we talked about the weather. Yeah, so everybody <laughs> talks about the weather in Phoenix as well, so... We understand talking about the weather. So tell us, and you're going to shoot this film this summer, obviously. Um, and yes. Patricia, you're going back to Montreal for the summer. And uh, Christian, you're obviously still in Mon or Are you in Montreal now or are you in Toronto? Uh, well, I'm between cities. I kind of go back and forth depending oh. on where the work is. But okay. now at the moment, I'm in Montreal. Yeah. Okay. But I understand you have plans to move to L.A.? I do. So oh, much. cool. See, you could you could move in with Patricia. <laughs> <laughs> we've, been, we've been talking about that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If well, that, let's assume that you can, you know, live together. It's it's yeah, very different have, yeah, being friends be like and living trial. together. Yeah. We 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 will rent a, a mansion in the hills and each have our own section. You know. I see, so, and this is after you win the lottery, right? Right. Exactly <laughs> after the movie comes out. There you go, and it makes lots and lots of money. It makes tons of money, and then all the scripts start pouring in you yeah know. so anyway uh, what's funny is that uh, christian and i have traveled to several film festivals together 
and we have shared rooms and been roommates and you know so we we at least went the hard way when we had to uh, go to tiff to the toronto international film festival and we stayed in this like oh my god terrible hotel it was like <laughs> There were rats and mice. And oh, no. Oh. Yeah, the last day, there was a mouse in my luggage. <gasps> oh. Yeah, they oh. ate stuff in my luggage, and they, they were, were like, uh, running under the bed. It was in the middle of the night, I remember, I, I, I kept hearing, like, this sound of, like, plastic being chewed on. And oh, I'm like, no. what is that? And I'm just, ah. and I think, I think Patricia had a, I think you had, like, popcorn in your luggage. Like, you <laughs> well, know, how did and, that happen? <laughs> But popcorn in her luggage? Yeah, okay, mouse. let's 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 back up a little bit. First I want to know about the popcorn in the luggage, then we can talk about the rats. I think I think as a snack you'd bought like popcorn or uh, or something it, and it, oh. it, it came in a swag bag from Tiff from one of the oh, popcorn, okay. and I just throw it into my luggage. <laughs> because you know, I put my stuff in my luggage and what that night you could hear the Oh my god. Man. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I remember falling asleep, and I and I was listening to that, and I'm like, and I didn't associate that to to a mouse. I'm like, this place is haunted. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just like, so I'm just like, okay, so relax. Patricia please, is influencing this hotel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm just like, relax, meditate, just focus on your breath, you know. And I'm like, it's nothing, it's nothing. And, <laughs> and then so you I get up in the morning, and it's a mouse. Oh my yeah. god. No, we're like, pack no. This is what happened. We're packing up, and Patricia tells me she's like, Christian. This just go, you know, before we leave, just go through your your luggage because it happened to a friend of mine that there was like they were in this hotel and like they brought back like a like a cockroach or something from the hotel oh. to make sure it's clean. So I'm just like going through my stuff and a mouse jumps up at me and oh. I like jump on the bed and then Patricia jumps on the bed, starts screaming. She doesn't know why she's screaming. She doesn't know why I'm screaming, but she's screaming. This is like at a Christmas <laughs> vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Scroll out of the did tree. It on purpose to scare me. I was putting my makeup on, and he came yeah. to touch my feet. You know, and I started screaming. <laughs> oh my That's lord! You in Toronto on? Um, don't go. Don't, uh, go. <laughs> don't go to the Waverly. It's the cheapest Everything. hotel in town. Everything the worst was stuck. There was nothing available. Nothing. Oh my! And Dream except... tip. During you know? tip, yeah, during the festival, it's everything's booked up, so that they were the only ones with vacancies, and now we know why. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> and you were the only <laughs> room booked. Huh? You exactly. can't make this stuff up. Can't. It just. <laughs> no. it's, it's just well, well, if you've lived through that, you could probably. Yeah, live, yeah live, I think you can handle together. pretty much anything. I mean, you you could yeah. be you know in, in, an, in an earthquake vulnerable house, and you'll be fine. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> now. Tell us <laughs> what wow. started this whole thing is t talking about the film and the pre-production and everything. So tell us about the Indiegogo campaign and uh, tell us just a little bit about that and what, what are some of your goals and some of the perks, if you can share that, and um, just let her rip. Absolutely. Well, I was fortunate enough to have met the people at Indiegogo uh, last year at the Oaxaca Film Fest in Mexico, and I met them again one-on-one uh, -on -one during South by South Southwest two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are going to mentor me on how to better maximize the campaign throughout the whole 30-day um, journey. Uh -huh. And they will also highlight the campaign, and they are giving me tremendous tips on how this works there's a formula you know to achieve your goals on uh, uh, those uh, platforms right and basically what they said is to gather army in place and on the day one the first day of the campaign they said whoever loves you that you know your parents your family your best friends your fans they must donate on that first 24 hours and reach 30 percent of the campaign the goal Otherwise, it's going to be more challenging for you to, to reach the goal because people like the other people, the friends of the friends or uh, whoever comes across the, the campaign, if they see on the first 24 hours that it has not reached enough numbers, they will perceive it as a failure. Oh, wow. That's so, interesting. That's, so but I think that's a, that's a very accurate observation. 
Yeah, so they said, oh, well, you know, they haven't reached, there's not a lot of money in there. Um, oh, and then they'll forget about it. So you constantly have to keep the momentum going. But if you start strong and all the people who told you, yes, I'll donate $5 or $20, $25, whatever the amount is, I promise to donate it on the first day, then we're good. Because right. it just keeps uh, rising and rising. And then there's another last minute sprint towards the last three days where this is when okay it's now or never like if you haven't donated if you said you would do it or you forgot about it this is your last chance last call to donate so we can reach our goal and if you do it right apparently you can even surpass your goal right and that's what we're, uh, we would love to achieve because uh, a movie after it's made this is when the the most um expenses come is to go to film festivals the submissions to film festivals attending q a's promoting the movie that's what really costs a lot of money and that's when great shorts or great movies will fail if they don't have the marketing behind it to promote it right so yeah we we will uh do the things properly with the mentorship from indiegogo and, and uh, yes I was going to say we're launching. Is it still April eighth? Is that the? Yeah, we're going to launch uh, uh, April eighth that weekend. Yep, that would be today. And make sure to uh, yeah, maybe you can cut that out. Yeah, but uh, okay. yes, uh, we're launching strong and having all of our team come on board. That's the army. We encourage all of our fans, especially my horror fans, the people who love my horror shorts please help out with this film because there's a higher purpose uh, to develop something that is very high quality, that has a message and also something that will speak to our, our generation today about mm -hmm. being open, being diverse, and it, it is okay to also not to have labels yeah, and to absolutely. question yourself and to keep evolving in your own identity as a human being but also to embrace the sexual diversity we all have absolutely because we are we are sexual beings and and that is a, an important part of it so this indiegogo campaign that is launching today uh we have already talked about that uh, since this is our special episode just for you for the launch of this indiegogo campaign for morning after we talked about that on our episode that we released monday that it was coming forward, and we've got this great article and links to the Indiegogo campaign and wonderful stuff. So tell us about, uh, can you tell us about any of the perks that you have? Or what, do, what is your goal? Can you tell us about the goal, or uh, is is that verboten for, the, <laughs> for something that's yes. not in the Indiegogo? Well, I, I'm going to be honest with you. The total budget we have budgeted this short is $130,000. Wow. And I know to some people who make amazing shorts with $5,000, they would say, oh, my God, this is you can shoot a feature with that amount of money. However, I've been shooting shorts on a shoestring all my career. I've yeah. done dozens of shorts. I've been... Uh, you know, I, I'm an entrepreneur, so when I'm working on a film, I'm not earning money, and I'm not. Uh, I've paid my dues for the last 15 years, making right. no money and losing money. I even had to sell my house to be able to finish Ceramic Tango, one of my first horror shorts. So I don't want to do that again. And we're working with the A-list young actors of Quebec and Canada, so I cannot ask them after working with Dennis Quaid to come and work for free because I don't feel it's ethical and they don't need to work on this short with me. So, and it's all union and Canada, it's different because we have a union based industry. Right. So if you add up everything, all the days of shoots and rent the, the equipment, the locations, it comes to $130,000. Of course, uh, we can do it for less and, my goal is to reach about 50,000. Uh, the Indiegogo campaign is uh, much less, but Indiegogo would be more a support to the other grant applications and in my financial structure. And I'm very confident we will make an outstanding short that will go to A-list festivals. The script is very, very strong. 
the actors are super solid and um, the whole team, my DP, Martin Bouchard, and everybody else involved are top of the line in the industry. Right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, every dollar counts. Uh, we're not going to make money with this. It's just to be able to sustain a decent workflow and to be able to make it right. Wow. So it goes, uh, also the, a lot of the money from Indiegogo will be to support the promotion of the film so we can have an, a premiere at an important festival and sub, be able to submit it. And um, I don't have an, another house to sell, so this <laughs> will be a g- great way to keep making great movies. You bet. So that that's pretty ambitious, but I think that you have enough contacts you can... You will achieve that goal, and I'm I'm very confident that you have what it takes to to make a great film. And we believe in it. We'll we'll certainly uh, contribute. We can probably at a a much smaller amount than <laughs> than a hundred thousand dollars. But so much you're contributing so much with uh, just allowing us this platform to be part of your podcast. It's well, uh, I'm very grateful and very. Um, you know, uh, it, amazed of how supportive you are of independent filmmakers, and I thank you for that. Well, on my I, behalf and all the other ones you have interviewed as well. Yeah, I would also add, um, based on the strength of your skill as a director, Patricia, just based on that alone, that would be enough to get me to want to support uh, Morning After because. I've I've seen so many of the things that you've directed, and your your vision is so amazing. Uh, every, every time I finish watching one of your projects, I'm I'm just completely taken aback by how beautiful it is. Yeah, and and it's like we know this person. Yeah, it's, it's, like, that's, it's just so cool. Yeah, it's like know? yeah, I pinch myself. I actually know who this person is. I've had lunch with her. Uh, so, okay. but but on the strength of your ability to direct alone, that should be enough for anybody who knows you Absolutely. to say, "I want to support this film." Absolutely. Uh, but now this act, this is going to bring up a little side question: um, How long of a short this is? I mean, how many minutes do you uh, project this the short film being? Uh, the total uh, running time would be under fifteen minutes, so we can submit to can. We can submit to Sundance. Uh, they have uh, that. That's my ideal length between ten and fifteen minutes. Uh, I just want to mention that this is a prequel to a feature and longer project okay. that Christian would eventually <clears throat> uh, develop. Uh, we will develop it because there's an interest for this story from other people okay. who want the feature yeah. format. So maybe it's a even a series. Question. That's going to bring us really far. Well, the, if I, can I jump in? And sure. this is actually really cool because, you know, um, I had no expectations at all uh, of what this film was going to become and how it was going to impact people. And, you know, as soon as we shot the teaser, it it's taken a life of its own. And there's been, you know, anybody that, that's seen the teaser that, that I've talked to about the film, there. It, it, I don't know if it's just the universality of it, but people from all different kinds of communities are, are just vibing with it so much. Um, you know, this 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 part of developing it into a feature is, is for me is essentially stemming from people's interest in wanting to see more of it. You know, and wanting I feel like people want this uh, this theme to be explored in more depth. I'm yeah. finding a lot of people that are identified. They're like, oh, my God, yeah, like that really, this is like my story. Or this is, you know, I haven't seen, you know, a film really talk about it through this perspective. So I feel like it's more than anything, it's a, it's a reflection of, of, of our generation. Yeah. Um, it'll allow us to speak to sort of showcase the voice of our generation about how we feel about sexuality and how we see ourselves. And, in, in, you know what I mean? So. Well, then. It's interesting, and, and as, as I said, maybe a series. Maybe it could be the Canadian Queer as Folk, you know? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it could be. It could if you, be totally. if you remember that. So. Yeah. Now, I also, yeah. now, I, I want to go back to Keith's question uh, regarding the campaign. Uh, what are some of the, the perks that oh, a yes. donator might be able to enjoy? Well, they're very interesting perks. Uh, 
we we will uh, of course give out access to the digital uh, screener uh, some things like that but what's the most valuable to me is that uh, as an acting coach I will be donating my time to whoever wants to receive uh, acting coaching from me and it could be anywhere in the world it could be LA in person Montreal in person or via Skype and I've done some sessions with Christian before an audition and he can tell you about how that works for Skype and it's, it's magic wow. it's like magic well Patricia is pretty mean, incredible I, I, talented person to begin with so and I will also be donating uh, one or two PR campaigns uh, to whoever wants to become an executive producer I will be promoting their next film I would be promoting whatever they want me to promote uh, I have a the luxury of being the founder of uh, Chicard public relations so I have all this network and support from the media so I can leverage somebody else's project through my company as a perk and that's very valuable like you wouldn't be able to uh, some people are not able to afford the proper PR campaign but if they donate they will be able to that's great that, that is really kind of some neat perks there so um, I just wanted to visit something in your uh, questions Christian you had said about being an empath and I think that may be what's coming across in that teaser is that empathic nature and that that understanding of of people that uh, is being embraced what would you how would you comment on that uh, yeah that's that's I kind of put that in last second I was like do I want to talk about this it's, hey why not I mean yeah I, for for people that don't know what that is, empath is uh, I think it's more of a psychological term than anything. It's a it's a it's a sort of characteristic certain people have of of being able to absorb uh, uh, more than other people, just to be able to absorb uh, others' emotions, um, energy. You know, when you walk in a room, when I walk in a room, I can feel the vibe so well. Like I I know if something if there's tension or if there's something negative happening here or if someone's really, really pot, I can feel it in my gut right away. Right. So that's something that I've learned to sort of, uh, I've learned about myself as I've gotten older and, and it helps, you know, in, in, cause I'm, I'm very curious and I love observing people and, and being em empathic, it, 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 you know, whenever I talk to somebody or I write a character, it comes from a, a place of, of, of energy and it comes from a place of, um, I would almost say like a deeper understanding of what's happening beneath the surface. And, um, and when writing and even when acting, it's always coming from that place of searching for that truth within myself and, and the truth within, within my characters wanting to make them as, as human and as real as possible. Uh, because with that, you have that universality that we can all relate to. It doesn't matter what you're talking about. I think if it's real and if you have human beings on screen, and right. actors that are capable of being real on screen, uh, it'll transcend everything. Yeah. I'm you know, beginning everything. to I'm beginning to see why Christian and Patricia are such a good match now. Absolutely, you, <laughs> I was going to say you add yeah. you add Patricia's you know understanding of of power and, and well not power but energy and and people's working together and your empathic nature and it. I remember watching that that teaser the first time and just feeling so at peace and, and it, it really comes across it really does and and being at peace with the subject matter too it, it's yeah I think that the two of you have something that is really <laughs> going so cool. to um, yes. you know. so glad you could see it Keith yeah, yeah. well I, I remember That's... yeah I felt it too I remember as I was watching it and I'm, you know yes. and th it's it's still early in the evening they're laughing and I'm thinking you know there's there's something that feels very real here that God, I really would like to be in with that group right now. Yeah, and, and the two oh, of you. Well, you're you're welcome to join in. And <laughs> if we if we win <laughs> the lottery, we'll yeah. we'll be up there. We'll contribute. <laughs> yeah, if we ever if we if we manage to win the Powerball, sure, we'll be up there during yeah. the filming. We'll <laughs> give you the hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, we'll donate right there. <laughs> Yay! You don't need to donate. You just come and uh, be with us on set. That would be so great to have you guys there. Yeah, that, would, that would be. We, we have passports. We'll have. Uh, well, take a look at this. <laughs> 
do you think about broadcasting that? Broadcasting live. Right? Yeah, we exactly. It's <laughs> not the first time yeah. we've done it before. Yeah. We've drugged yeah. we've drugged the studio yeah, across we've, country we've, before. We've so. taken the, the studio apart and taken it with us. It's not nith- not nothing new. We've done it. So. Yeah, there's some there's something you said just recently that really struck me. Um, I don't know which one of you said it, but uh, was about how you how it felt there you felt there was ease in in watching what was going on and and it struck a chord with me because you know I remember when writing it it was so important to me that you know this is a subject matter that you know can be uncomfortable for right. a lot of people exactly you know and and I feel like there's you know there is a way to be able to to tell a story where there where there isn't where it's not uncomfortable you know it does it shouldn't be uncomfortable it's the most natural thing in the world yeah right? and, and that was that was what struck me that uh, watching that teaser that it was very you know how sometimes you get those films and they're they're talking about sexuality and it's very uncomfortable and very there, there's uneasy an awkwardness and there's an awkwardness but this was very I didn't get that it was very organic and natural and you know just peaceful you know, and and the awkwardness and it, as it should be <laughs> yeah and the awkwardness that I've seen in so many other films it it feels very scripted it doesn't feel real and yet uh-huh. as as uh uh, your, your one character as he starts to uh, explore these feelings that he's having the thought that uh, came the thought that I was getting or the emotion that I was feeling is that there is something very genuinely safe and at the same time it felt real oh my god I'm like mm-hmm. pumping my fists in the air I'm so happy <laughs> that's cool to hear this feedback it's so great yeah awesome well but it comes from a very personal place too um personally i identify with all of those characters each and every one is different and i identify with each and every one of them myself as a person right so when you absorb and you work with energy and the actors are in line with that vision that christian brought on paper it was so um empowering for everybody and the love of the story the love of those characters really transcend the screen and that's why i think uh i'm developing more and more the acting coaching with energy and relationships like my relationship with christian as a writer and not just as an actor now it's um something that allow us to develop a truth uh, an authenticity that comes uh, very uh realistically on camera it's incredible. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I'm excited. I'm very excited. And, that, and uh, I actually, I'm glad you brought that up, Patricia, because you actually you just reminded me of a question that I want to address to Christian. And that is, uh, with, this, with this project, you're writing it and you're acting in it. How is that, uh, writing a character that you are going to play, um, how do you approach that, both in terms of just the writing and then, approach it again when you're actually acting out the part um it's well i mean we'll we'll have to wait and see how that uh turns out but uh but from my experience in the in when we were shooting the teaser to my surprise it was so easy um from to, to in the, the sort of acting part of it i was able to sort of turn off my my writer's brain and actually i turned off my writer's brain the moment I kind of surrendered this the script to Patricia because I knew at that point this was no longer mine. It was going to take a, a, a new life wow. through her vision. So and I trust Patricia implicitly, so it's for me it was very easy to just, you know, I know it's in safe hands and I know she's gonna do it brilliantly. And I could tell right away by the way that she had decorated the set. I mean, I was like, Oh my god, this is exactly what I envisioned. That mm-hmm. is cool. And we didn't even talk much about what it was going to look like, right? So that was one of the things. So trusting Patricia allowed me as an actor to sort of kind of just sit back and enjoy watching this imaginary world come become real in front of my eyes. Uh, and in terms of preparation, you know, just to give a little bit of context, the way that I that I write most of the time isn't, I guess, what, what, we, what we would assume, assume traditionally for a screenwriter or any writer which is like okay i have a plan i want to i want to write a film about this that never happens to me for me it's like i'll be 
living my life and and all of a sudden I'll get inspired by something whether it's a song whether it's an encounter with somebody and that inspiration as I follow it it's like I get this glimpse into this world that I feel was already there that I just couldn't see wow and then the moment I I get it's like kind of being in a vivid dream you know it's like it's so vivid to me and I can see all I can I can see the the apartment so clearly uh, I don't have to, it's like I don't have to create anything it's already there so all I'm really doing is sort of transcribing mm-hmm. what I'm seeing <laughs> you're not the first person page. to say this yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah I've heard yeah it's it's you know it's I don't know it's like <laughs> no seriously uh, I mean we've interviewed a number of authors and yeah. all the best ones, at least the ones that we key into. Now, this is, I'm For finding this reason, really yeah. fascinating. <laughs> the authors that we really relate to the best are the ones who have that same kind of inspiration. In fact, one of our, uh, one of our dearest friends who's an author, she calls it um, hind brain writing or writing from the hind huh. brain. Wow. Uh, she does that. And, and when I write, when I write a review, I do the same thing. Keith is the same way when he writes. It's not something where you just sit down and you think about. It's, I mean, both of us, either one of us at any time will just feel this mad inspiration. I have to write this. And it just mm. kind of gushes out. Yeah. And yeah. and I, I think it's fascinating that uh, the authors and writers that, that we relate to the best are the ones who operate under that kind of... Um, that kind of model like you do, Krishna, I, I'm just finding this enormously fascinating that you're, wow. you're just like that. I had no idea. I mean, I, I'm not a, I never went to school for it. It's, it's something that I self taught. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd read a lot of scripts as an actor, I'd received a lot of scripts. And, and so I knew the, the, the structure of things, but you know, I, when I started writing, I didn't even know that you had, you know, script writing programs that edited everything for, for you. I had like to go through like Microsoft Word and try to like put in the margins, and it was so time consuming. So uh, we so call that a pain in the butt. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's awesome. But that's the that's... best writing, though, when it comes from the heart and you just put mm-hmm. it on paper. Absolutely. And I get the feeling, you know, it going back to the idea of creative energy. I think that is when it's at its most honest. Oh, yeah. And I yes. think uh, that is probably why when Keith and I watched the teaser, we both came away thinking that th- this was something that had a lot of truth to it because it comes from a real and honest creative source. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It was it was really kind of neat. I mean, we sat and watched it together. Right? A number of times. Yeah, so... and. It, we we just still kind of gush over it and and gush over each other even though it's been twenty years now. Yeah, <laughs> you know? we we've been together for twenty years and it, we we still like each other. It's yeah. <laughs> amazing, you know. Still make each other and laugh. And that very fortunate. that was very it was very comfortable to see people meeting and people that were friends and interacting with each other on that level and uh, to be sensual and and sexual obviously. And to be okay with that, it was it was really cool. So, yeah. But again, there's yes. the the thing that I love the most is that the the energy that you get feels very safe and very welcoming, and that's something that just lured me right in. And I I very very seldom have I seen a movie. The only other mo- uh, Big Eden's the only other movie that I thought that actually captured that same kind of genuine warmth yeah. to it and those are the kind of movies that i think i gravitate towards and mm-hmm. i would be very i i would love to see this thing just become a smash success i would too. seriously in the film circuit yeah. industry because and then i think there's a lot of beauty to it pursue that uh that um feature length film yeah and then possibly a series there you go. I would love I mean, to see turn into a move, series. Move out to L.A. there, Christian. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that would be one of the good ways. L.A. is a great place if you're if you're a writer to be able to to pitch your ideas. Exactly. Yeah. Um, absolutely. But I, I I love I love what you say about you know feeling welcoming and safe because if there's if there's uh, anything that I hope this film can do for anybody who's who's watching uh, who may be you know confused or 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 searching for uh, their sexual identity or what it, you know, to be able to 
for them to watch this and feel comfortable and feel like it's okay. Where I am is okay. And, you know, I don't have to be afraid of that confusion and to be able to, to shine light on a positive role model of, of a sort of inclusive and loving and safe, uh, model for sexual identity, uh, you know, it's, it's so sort of important and, and to hear you guys, you, cause I didn't think of those words. It just, in the moment you're saying those words, welcome and safe, it's just, it makes me so happy because I think that's, that's exactly how I see it and how I would want people to feel when they watch it. Right. Wonderful. So, so we, I'm assuming that we're going to have the link for the Indiegogo campaign in our show notes for this episode. Keith, yes. Is that right? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Yes. So the link for the Indiegogo campaign for anybody who's listening, just go to our website, tggeeks.com. Look for this episode, this interview, and in the show notes for it, you will see the link for the Indiegogo campaign. So for anybody who wants, let me start with you, Patricia. If anybody wants to learn more about you and your work, do you, I mean, obviously, you know, you, you know you've got a website, but can you tell, uh, tell people where they may learn more about you in, uh, throughout all of the intertubes? Yes, uh, my website is the source where all the links are uh, placed. So patriciachica.com. I'm very active on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, my YouTube handle and channel is Chicatronica. So you can watch a lot of content there, uh, music videos I've directed, short films, uh, interviews with me behind the scenes, uh, festival Q and A's, everything about my career on video is on YouTube. I also have a Vimeo channel, more professional for the short films. Uh, please interact with me. I love my audiences. I love uh, that exchange and communication with my audiences that I have been building since uh, the last 12 years. So I'm very um, inclined to answer if people ask me real uh, intelligent questions, I will always answer gladly. Cool. So Christian, what about you? Where do we find you on the intertubes? So the, <laughs> the first most important thing uh, is that my name, Christian, is spelled with a K. Uh, so it's Christian with a K, and last name is Hotco. Uh, you can find me. My handle is the same for everything because it turns out I'm the only person – from what Google tells me, I'm the only person on the planet that has that name. Well, that's good. So if you just Google Christian Hotko, you'll find, you know, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I think I have a, I have a Vimeo page, and I and I think I have a, a what's that thing called Vine? Yeah, I believe it is Vine with the short video. Anyway, I think I have just like one clip on there. I'm not much on my on Vine much, but yeah. So Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter are my main sources. Cool. Definitely. Mm -hmm. this, is, out. this is so wonderful to talk to you guys and to talk to you as you're launching your Indiegogo campaign for Morning After. Yeah, and I've, yeah. Been, I've been really wanting to talk to you, to the both of you, well, especially you, Christian. Since we saw the teaser, I'm like, I, mm. yeah, Keith and I, yeah. I remember the conversation. We both expressed a great interest in wanting to be able to speak with you. So yeah. it's an honor and a joy oh. to be able to do that. And then when we were mm. communicating uh, I, with Tr Patricia, she said, you have to I'm talk so, to Christian. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah, I'm so, I'm so touched by that. Thank you so much. I mean, the honor is mine as well. I mean, it's, it's really just the, the, the feedback that, that we've been able to get about this. Um, and you guys, you know, it's, it's just been so affirmative and positive and, and it, it really makes me feel like we're, Patricia and I are definitely on the right track and, and we're, we're, we're doing the good kind of cinema that's, that, that has social impact and that, that, that can really that inspire and help people. Yeah. You know, one of the things, yes. about, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you said that because, uh, I think filmmakers have a responsibility in many cases. Yes. It's okay to make you know, popcorn, fluff, or, or a Pulp Fiction type of movie uh, with, with, a, with an intense and dark message. But I think there's also the responsibility to uh, show the other side. And I think you're doing that. I think, you know, and I, in fact, I know you're doing it, both of you together. And it, it, I'm, I'm thrilled and I, I cannot wait to see the finished product. I'm very excited about it. Well, I mean, thank you you know, yeah, thank you. Well, Very thank much. you, Christian and Patricia, for being with us on TG Geeks Webcast this week.
we will definitely be looking forward to uh, talking to you again in the future, hopefully at a film festival. You never know. Yes. Hopefully. And uh, <laughs> thank you so much for all the support and for always being present to support independent artists. You guys are amazing. Well, thank, thank you. You, from you guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Well, thank really. you. Hi, I'm Patricia Chica, director, producer of Morning After. And I'm Christian Hotko, writer and actor of Morning After. And you're listening to the Two Gay Geeks podcast. Oh, yeah. And that's usually our second segment uh, sound that we use, but we're shortening our uh, little uh, thing today in just having the interview. Well, it was a good-sized interview. Yeah, it was. But we're, we are, still do have a couple of things that we want to talk about in this second, second segment, and uh, primarily the importance of independent filmmaking. And this interview that we did with Patricia and Christian was just, it was so much fun. I had a great time talking to them and it's talking about ma mice and hotels. <laughs> Everything. That was just the craziest story. That, that was hilarious. <laughs> anyway, but to talk about independent filmmaking it, and yeah. the launch of the Indiegogo campaign for that film, please, you can be a part of independent filmmaking and you can, for a very small amount, be part of the crowdfunding, if you will. And it, it's it's very satisfying to be involved with an independent film. And there's something that I really want to add. Uh, th for the longest time, I think there's been some sort of a stigma that has been placed on the the whole labeling of in independent filmmaking. You know, a lot of people kind of think, oh, it's, it's something that's really artsy fartsy you know and and would have nothing in common with the the regular movie viewer and i would say rubbish to that based on some of the uh, independent films some of the shorts that oh we've seen gosh. at film festivals Absolutely. have been amazing They've just been incredibly intelligent incredibly produced just unbelievable i mean you can get some very artistic stuff you know we we talked you know we talked with patricia chica and she she did one uh serpent's lullaby oh my gosh which is it's a horror but a tragic horror and at the same time it has such a beautiful artistry to it i mean it's just one of the most beautifully shot films uh i've seen in such a long time and yet it still has that very gothic horror element to it i mean wow yeah. and we've seen some amazing science fiction I mean, we're oh, we're connected yeah. to some independent science fiction. Yeah, the BTI. So, unbelievable. Uh, just because something is an independent, does not disqualify it from being worthwhile or worthy of your attention. There is some great stuff out there. Yeah, it, and you should look at local film festivals, including the Phoenix Film Festival. Which that is coming right up. It opened yesterday. Actually, last night. Exactly, last night, uh, April the 7th. And actually today, this afternoon or this evening, another Patricia Chica film, a short. It's only three minutes. It is an incredible short. It's called A Tricky Treat. You oh, boy. You will love it. It, it is, is so absolutely it's Fun. warped. It, it is warped. It is absolutely <laughs> warped. You can actually check out our review and the specifics on when A Tricky Treat is going to be showing at the Phoenix Film Festival in the show notes below. Also, uh, another film that's showing at a, the Phoenix Film Festival that we covered was... Uh, a, was it Night, Night of the of Slasher? Slasher? Yes, I Night loved of Slasher. Night of the Slasher. It was incredible. That yeah. is one of the most brilliantly shot independent shorts that I have seen in such a long time. We've got a review for that on our website, tggeeks.com. It is it if you are a fan of John Carpenter's Halloween. Oh, you will love it. You will love this short. And it's it's yes. just fantastic. It is. And it was actually a um it's a proof of concept. A proof of concept. They're wanting to do a feature length of this, and it was really great. Oh, it, it was freaky. It was fun. I loved it. Yeah. 
And we also, uh, there's an article on our website as well that we're going to have a link to, The Importance of Independent Filmmaking. I kind of went on a little rant there. So Well, good for it you. Is, it's really good to, to talk about independent film. And we have been involved with independent films, uh, two films, uh, well, uh, Two or three or four? I don't uh, remember now. More now. We, I mean, we've given to those. They're Indiegogo campaigns. We were uh, uh, producers on one film because we'd given enough. It was a micro budget. Right. But uh, it was, you know, so we have been involved in independent filmmaking. We support independent filmmaking. We Big love time. to go to film festivals where independent films are shown, do reviews, talk to the the filmmakers, uh, Hartwell Imaginings Film Festival. We mm-hmm. kind of started our our uh, film festival viewing last year, and we are actually going to go back to Horrible Imaginings, and we are actually going to sponsor the LGBT block of films for uh, this year at Horrible Imaginings Film and Festival. And I'm very excited about that. Now, wasn't last year the first time Miguel did that? Yes, I believe so. So now that Miguel has got this really a more solidified idea because last year's was amazing. I mean, the oh, entire, yeah. the entire festival was just amazing. Yes, it was. Uh, I think now he's got a better grasp on what he's doing uh, just from basic experience. Uh, I'd be very excited to see what will be playing this year. Yes. It I mean, I, I'm, I'm hoping that maybe a certain, um, certain little short that we've uh, from a certain Zach, that yeah, we interviewed. Yeah. Uh, I would love to see his short yeah, show up there. Yeah, that would be great. That would be great. Yeah, so it's really important to um, support independent film. I think that that is how film is going in the future. There are a lot, of, a lot of independent filmmakers, a lot of great independent filmmakers that work literally on micro budgets. Mm-hmm. Some of them have big budgets. Uh I mean, take for instance. I mean, Axanar is a is an independent. That film. is technically an yeah. independent film. So, it's just amazing what people can do independently without a big major studio. Yeah, and, that yeah, without the oversight that a big studio will well, actually and, and overhead. Well, yeah, that too. But I think a lot of the time studios will actually enforce their creative vision or what they they deem to be a creative vision when in reality it's more like a financial vision. Yep, rant, exactly. rant, rant. Uh, which would then kind of stifles what the what the writer and the director's trying to do. Exactly. So it's it's really nice to have independent films out there. It gives the director and the writer a chance to do something that they really firmly believe in. I mean, you know, George Lucas started off as an independent filmmaker. Yep. I a, mean, a lot of yeah, people I mean, did. Star Wars, uh, Episode Four, Star Wars was technically... Uh, I mean that that's it was almost an independent film. I mean he finally he got some backing from 20th Century Fox on that, uh, and they they own part of it now. But he really got his start doing independent films. Yeah. So there's a lot to be said about the filmmakers that are out there because you never know someone who's you know like like Zach Noe Towers. You know who knows maybe maybe in, a, in in five or six years, you know he he could be another Ivan Reitman. I mean, there, there, anybody, he could be know? he could be any major director for any major studio. Uh, you you have no idea where their careers may go. You know, like Zach's his his short is going to Cannes. Yeah, I mean that's a big deal. Cannes Film Festival. That is incredible. I mean, yeah. It, it really so it, it's it's great to get these filmmakers an opportunity to have their visions really fully realized and to be to be shown out there will some of them fail yeah it, it happens but then they turn around and they come up with something really really great like what pia thrasher was able to do oh yeah and or, or pablo and santo i mean there's just so many great stuff that's out there and their work needs to be seen so bet. definitely support independent films if you have an opportunity to support independent films either through an indiegogo campaign or just watching a film at a film festival, please do it. Absolutely. There are some really good, talented people. And of course, we have a few follow up items. As always, uh, not quite the list that we normally have, but I do want to talk about Phoenix Comic Con 2016. They continue to announce fabulous guests, and the passes are still available. And you can get uh, a full pass, I think, through the end of April for $60. That's all four days. 
Uh, so check out, there's hotel rooms still available. Check out phoenixcomiccon.com. They've also announced that Fan Fest this year will be returning, and it will be October the 22nd and 23rd, downtown Phoenix at the Convention Center. They'll have more information after the June event. And I, I do want to add, you know, yes, Phoenix Comic Con is continuing to add guests because the actor who uh, plays Lucy Lane's father in Supergirl was just announced at, yes, at, right. at this coming Comic Con. So, I, yeah, they're still uh, bringing the people in, which I think is and exciting. Bigger names are being announced as we get closer. That's right. And, of course, we have to give a shout out to our favorite Facebook group, The Gay Geek. Well, why are they our favorite? Well... It's because they allow us to post our episodes. <laughs> well, not just that. Well, no. I mean, well, no, no, not really. I, 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 I jest. They're my, they're our favorite because they are really an awesome group with they an are. really uh, awesome group of people there. But yes, their their high moderator Puba Jeremiah Reeves has given us his blessings to post our episodes there, which only, of course, raises their. You know the, the their loveliness in our eyes. Yes, but thank, yes, that's thank you, Jeremiah. That's Facebook dot com slash groups slash the gay geek. And lastly, we want to take a moment and ask you to click on the Amazon ads that we have at the end of our articles. You don't have to buy anything; just click on one. It shows Amazon that we're driving traffic to them. And if you do want to buy something every once in a while, it would be great if you would buy it through one of our links. It helps us. <laughs> And that's our up next time sound. I don't know. It depends. We, on, again, we never know we because never know. things for us are so rapidly changing, not just week to week, but day to day. Yep, they certainly do. And that should do it for this episode of TG Geeks Webcast. Be sure to check out the article for this episode. We've got several links on the page. And remember, you can comment on our Facebook page, our website at tggeeks.com, or you can leave a voicemail at 469-TG-Geeks. That is 469-844-3357. From TG Squared Studios, I am Keith Lane. Thanks for listening. I bid you peace. Cheers. Cheers.